13th February 2010, 7.15 in the evening. The German bakery in Pune was buzzing with visitors. Local students, tourists, they were all there. Right then, a bomb went off. 17 people were dead. Over 60 were injured. Authorities over here at German Bakery are taking no chances. In fact, the new owners of the restaurant who have reopened this restaurant after more than three years since the tragedy have heightened security over here significantly. In fact, this is the very ground that caught the first images of Yasin Bhatkal. The CCTV footage of this restaurant was crucial for the investigating agencies in helping them get a clear picture of what the terror mastermind looked like. The young customer who left back a rucksack over here on that fateful day of February 13, 2010 was much more lethal than they had imagined. They are one of the major perpetrators of the blasts here and uh, it is uh, uh, and in inputs which we have from the interrogation reports of many people who have been arrested which says that they are in Karachi in Pakistan. And uh, my, my interpretation or my assessment has been that it is not in the hands of the uh, Pakistan government per se. Uh, number one, they do not accept that these people are there. Number two, actually th this uh, side of their policy is being handled not by the elected government. It is being handled by the army and the ISI. And on this, I do not think that the elected government seems to be, uh, show any signs of having any control. If, the, if what they say is true, that they really want good relations with India, uh, they know that they can't get good relations with India if, they, if agencies within their country continue carrying out terror attacks in India. That will uh, that be a fool, very foolish government indeed, which would uh, uh, you know, go, uh, go in for a uh, friendly relations with Pakistan, despite that country uh, carrying out terrorist attacks with India. This dastardly attack was just one of the many across Indian cities, all masterminded by the Indian Mujahideen. An organization that was merely a wing of the Pakistani terror group lashkar e -Turba. And Yasin Bhatkal was the face of this outfit in India. Over the years, the strikes became increasingly similar. Bombs planted on two wheelers, the use of ammonium nitrate and multiple blasts in a matter of seconds. Yasin Bhatkal since uh, 2007, now when he started out, uh, you know, he actually, you know what is a very interesting thing, they started off in a place called as Kudre Gundi, which is, you know, in Chikmagalore. All the ammonium nitrate, which was used for all the blasts in the country, was actually transported out of Kudre Gundi by Yasin Bhatkal through another accomplice known as Akbar Ali. Akbar Ali. Now these people actually, they started this thing. So when Yasin Bhatkal uh, came in uh, to the picture, his main role was, you know, to the, the supply of arms and ammunition and, you know, the preparation of the bomb. He actually went, you know, uh, developed, I mean, in, he started, you know, bettering himself, you know, where the bomb uh, making was concerned. So in, initially what they planned out Indian Mujahideen was an operation known as Operation Bad, that is, you know, Bangalore and the Bad, Delhi. So in that uh, situation, uh, uh, Yasin Bhatkal was still making the bombs, whereas Riyaz Bhatkal was still running the show. Support from Pakistan is coming not only in the form of a passport, but Bhatkal says his brother Riyaz is still holed up there in Karachi. And while Pakistan might find itself on the back foot, the recent arrests, first Jindal, then Tunda, and now Yasin Bhatkal, is being viewed as a major coup for India's intelligence agencies. 
But it's early days yet to say that the tide of terror could finally be turning in India's favour. In a span of five years, Indian Mujahideen became a dreaded terror outfit. And as the trail of terror spread across Indian cities, it was the real bosses in Pakistan who were calling the shots. 24 hours since the arrest of India's most wanted man, and he was remorseless. Yasin Bhatkal was spilling the beans in custody. His confessions were bound to startle, and the police was prepared. Bhatkal confessed to visiting Pakistan in 2009, along with Iqbal and his brother Riaz. During his probe, Bhatkal confessed that Iqbal was made the chief of operations of the Indian Mujahideen. Yasin revealed that his brother was currently in Karachi. And then came the most incriminating of them all. Bhatkal confessed he met an ISI colonel who gave instructions for terror attacks in India. One thing is what we can do is uh, continue to build on uh, what we get from him and his association with the ISI or the agencies which are there in Pakistan. But you know, we will continue to do that. It's not like, you know, it's only now. Right from, you know, the parliament attack uh, days to, you know, the Jaisha Mahmud to lashkar e taiba days. We've always had enough and more proof against Pakistan. But this, at the end of it, is going to do nothing to them. They are just going to find another replacement for him and they will try to condemn because it's part of their state policy. It's not like uh, Yasin Bhatkal says, yes, I was there with the ISI, I was closely associated. Is going to, you know, change anything for them, basically. They will continue to deny it. In fact, you can say that this is a very dangerous period, basically, because you know what, see, they are down. They are down at the moment. And knowing the psyche of the Indian Mujahideen ever since its inception, how they have always behaved. See, they are very defiant, they are very, you know, that challenging in uh, nature. They will try and do something, I mean, maybe big or, you know, maybe just very, very small, symbolic kind of thing. You know, they will try and do something to show that, you know, look, we are down but not out. So immediately after his arrest, there was an intelligence circular sent across to all police stations that, you know, in the wake of arrest of Tunda and then, you know, later Asin Bhatkal, they will try and hit back because they have to keep showing that we are not down. The Pakistani hands becoming increasingly clear. The proof only more glaring. And the denials are not helping the hostile neighbor's case either. Two big terror catches in less than a fortnight. Abdul Karim Tunda and Yasin Bhatkal. The two men are on India's 15 most wanted list and they are now facing the law. But the arrest will only hold any significance if the evidence extracted from these dreaded men is used to name the terror bosses in Pakistan. Two big catches and still counting. Hey, I'm...